Hi, today in this extremely important episode I'm going to tell you about the most modern dramatic structure analysis called event line or event row. It's a part of the active analysis method most suitable for directors or experienced actors. A huge thing to talk for hours, but I'll try to introduce it short. Everybody knows about the three-act structure with its sit-up, confrontation, resolution, or Freytax analysis including introduction, rise, climax, fallen action, catastrophe. But event line is of another, greater dimension. Why? Well, first, these mentioned are drama theory analysis, which is literary analysis, investigating aesthetic, psychologic and social life notions, while event line is a director's analysis that uncovers the drama's active essence. The aim of the director's analysis is a competence to see drama as a part of life expressed by the sequence of events, with events being drama's structural primary source. Event line can literally describe any kind of a story. Play, narration, film, poetry, uh, real people's lives. I've tried it personally on various plays, from ancient to postmodern surrealist ones, and it really works. Now, some history of event line analysis. In his book, An Actor's Work on a Role, Stanislavski mentions it is natural to start analyzing the play's facts first. This launched it all. He writes about facts and events multiple times, and we can guess they are different somehow. All of these studies persuaded me that simple actions are not enough for the state I am. Entire events are needed. Then you start not only to be, to exist in the imagination's life, but to feel other people deeper, to feel your attitude towards them and their attitude towards yourself. People become known in disaster and happiness. So, events are something big. To be exact, Stanislavski never defined an event. Probably, he thought it was quite obvious. Instead, several times he uses the term wicked door. Stanislavski's students decode the term as turning landmark moments in a role that transfer actors from one big action to another. Playing the scheme of a role was about the ability to open wicked doors from one episode into another, to bring oneself into different state. However, Maria Knebel, one of prominent Stanislavski's students and colleagues, states he called events proactive facts. Stanislavski suggested to begin the play's systematic analysis with the determination of major events, or, as he said, proactive facts, namely facts that generate action. So, a proactive fact bears influence and stimulates the characters to actively move along the plot, it pushes the action. Determination of events is going to trail the given circumstances, to direct our mind, our will, onto the play's active structure. Events are magnets that attract all complexity and versatility of a play. If we start out with given circumstances, we risk sinking into them. We need a compass. 
same as it is unbelievably hard to turn actors from thinking what do I say here to what do I do here, same it is hard to teach directors to make actions on the basis of major events. Finally, Knebel comes up with one of the first event definitions, citing a writer Saltykov Shedrin. Drama, considered from the viewpoint of an event, is the last word or, at the very least, the decisive turning point of every human existence. That's the classic definition. The decisive turning point. But also, let's check up on some other definitions that could be more clarifying for you. Event is a trigger for action. The foundation a place building is set upon. Events break into life as whirlwind, crushing everything on their path turning the usual life aflow, bringing confusion into people's hearts. Something happens in this life that changes everything, evokes new thoughts and feelings, makes us peer into life more in a new fashion, changes this life's riverbed. This occurrence we call an event. An event can change life, put something in the shade or reveal as new one. Changing of circumstances. Something that can be played, one that happens beneath our eyes. Given circumstance that changes line of behavior. Given circumstance that changes and defines my action. A circumstance I am in a confrontation with. Turning in action. A proactive fact that turns a situation into another riverbed. An event always changes an action. Here from we actually witness an infinite chain. Event, action, event, action, event. Every single unit of time we live in a certain event. But what is the difference between an event and given circumstances? An event exists only in the present. When it recedes into the past, it becomes a given circumstance. But basically, as it was said before, an event is given circumstance that changes the line of behavior. In addition, events have some special aspects. They can be divided into directorial events of a play and acting ones, events of a role. Determination of the play's events and role's events is something different. By determination of the play's events or directorial events are meant those main turning events which alter the passage of the play's action and involve significant circle of characters in their influence. Such events are not so numerous. The role's events are applied only to particular character's line of action and behavior and might not include other characters. Certainly, the main events of the play come out to be important and action-defining for every character implicated in such event. A role consists of great number of events and it is exactly the fact. There are many of them being subjective in quite a few cases and emerging as events only to particular character that gave reason to Stanislavski to favor the term proactive fact, meaning to say a fact that incites to action. Event is a process, not a point. 
The point is just the moment of turning. That way, an event is a structural block of a plot that has its own introduction, rise, climax, turn, resolution or catastrophe. At last, but not least at all, an event is the internal process. It is not when a house collapses, but about a person seeing his or her home ruin. Events are the meaning, first of place analysis, then performances active forming. Whatever we do, be it growing accustomed to a play in private, analyzing it with actors and putting into action, we should always answer the question, what is happening? If nothing happens, there is no theater. An event, a proactive fact, is always an occurrence. Only this is not in common everyday terms. Cars crashed, bridge came down, but in the psychological sense, these are soul occurrence. Any play has hundreds of facts, dozens of simple events, but only six or seven main key events the play's action is grounded upon. Stanislavski has made suggestion to identify events' significancy by the feature whether its exclusion is possible. What would happen if there was no such event? He was asking. Again, it was Stanislavski who first gave names to significant events. Initial event and main event. Later on, Tavstanogov and Katzman, known as the Petersburg School, added defining event, central event and final event, along with the play's leading given circumstance. They created the term event line or event row. After analyzing dozens of plays, I felt that something was missing. And I personally think that culmination event should be present as well. So, we come up with such structural events. Initial event, defining event, culmination event, central event, main or protocol event, final event. Wrapped in the leading given circumstance. Let's see what these events are about. It's a given circumstance that, in spite of being remote in time, has a decisive impact on all the characters involved in the plot. It leads the plot, pushes it further, incites conflicts, defines the conflict's nature and degree. It's the plot's starting point. How did it all begin? The kernel of definition for performance's subject is concealed there. The leading given circumstance, revealed correctly, clarifies the play's atmosphere, discloses the conflict's nature. It is a reliable guide that specificates the performance's conception. It can be felt of every event in the plot. It defines the positions of opposing forces and is the source of action. The example of the leading given circumstance is the revolt of machines against humans in Terminator. The fact that creates a turn in previously existing life and brings the main characters into new interrelationship which defines their places and positions in a conflict contestation. Nature of a play. 
The particular play couldn't happen without this event. This event corresponds a powerful energy impact to the stage action. That is the event starting the plays and performances through action. Defining the initial event uh, might be tough sometimes as its position can be quite diverse. Right before the play begins, the moment the play begins, and after the play begins, after other regular events. Rely on logic, intuition and experience. After the initial event, it defines, literally, the character of a story. How would it look like? Answers the question, why did it happen so, or what happened? Let's take Hamlet. The defining event is when Hamlet gets to know from the ghost that his father was murdered. Culmination event is a global transition from happiness to disaster or from disaster to happiness. It fully reveals the true action. Positions of all the conflict sides reached the highest tension, revealed the impossibility of compromise. Cards are laid on the table. So, conditions for drastic actions arose. The culmination event not only does move the conflict and action, but changes them in terms of quality. The former life becomes impossible from now on. Central event expresses the idea or super objective of a play. The issue is about a radical turn, crucial moment which results in the action pressing forward towards fallen action. Perhaps this central node is the most complex plot's element. Its location inseparably tied to director's conception, to answering the about what question. That's why it leaves plenty of room for individual interpretation. Upon that, sometimes the central event can be naively plain and simple, and another time incredibly hidden and disguised by a playwright. The main event is something like an end of a mission or super objective in our language. It's a result of idea, which is the central event, implemented into life. Strong aftertaste of the central event, which is loud and visible for everyone. Confrontation is nearly over. The main event is also called the protocol event, as it usually depicts marriages, deaths, trials, various social events in public places with great amount of people, etc. An imaginary detective appears and enters such events into a protocol. The main event in Hamlet is the prince dying on the throne. If a plot is a clue of events, then the initial event is one tale of it and the main event another. The event line analysis usually starts by finding either the initial event or the main one. If you choose to start with the main event, it's favorable to use the previously mentioned detective, who shows up and gets to asking questions. Why the prince is dead? Why is he sitting on the throne? Who are these people lying on the ground dead? Etc. Spinning the clue of events backwards.
should also be said that Tastanokov and Katzman called climax the central event, and central event the main event, with the idea being in the main event, not central. The definitions of the events remain the same, so we just switch of names, the essence doesn't change. And here is the reason it's not quite right. Why is the main event is in fallen action? Why is it incorrect, though often it is done exactly this way, to call main the one that we identify as the central event? Really simple. If audience experience something main, their attention runs dry. That's it. Further action is clear, there is nothing to watch further on. They can head home. Funny to mention, but Katzman says the same, opposing their own views. After the main event, you can go to the check room now. Final event denotes final point something from Captain Obvious. It represents author's diagnosis, judgment of author's idea and performance's super objective. It's an estimation of a story. Warning. At any rate, do not perform event line analysis beforehand. First, after reading a play, experience something called burn. A mixture of ideas and feelings that impress you most. Knebel says, dream a little bit about a play to avoid illustrative directorial work. Strive for inner life depicting. Make the play your home. Leave it out. Then search for the significant events with hot nose. And never tell actors about event line during rehearsals. Instead, use questions like What is happening here? How important is it to you? And so on. It is not the play's life that should be formed up according to events. But events should be exposed from the life's current, having been created. We must construct life. Life and not events. That's what you should do. Give this life a chance to stream freely, without torturing it by the technology. It's of utmost importance. Because here goes the boundary between trained occupations craft and movement towards art. Now, we came up to the main event. We're gonna analyze the first Mickey Mouse animation playing crazy using the event line or event row. Please follow the link in the description to watch. The leading given circumstance, due to the animation's length, is uncertain and we have no clue about it. So, we have right to make an assumption. Animals are building a plane to bring the farm's mechanization to new heights, to gather more crops. Mechanization is spreading across the country. The initial event. Farm animals construct a plane. The defining event. 
After the first model having been unsuccessful, Minnie presents Mickey a horseshoe for luck and joins him. The culmination event. The second playing model almost crashes, but then turns out to be a valid one and flies on. The central event. Mickey takes the opportunity and kisses Minnie. Minnie refuses to be sexual harassed, even being privileged flying a plane, and leaves the machine with dignity. The main or protocol event. The plane crashes. The final event. Mickey metaphorically loses all his luck, being hit by the horseshoe. The director's professional responsibility is to think in an event-related way. It's the cornerstone of a profession called director. We have to make reader and spectator accept a fact, an event, a character as always a deeply controversial occurrence. They serve to evoke the complex and, once again, controversial process of reflection and not readiness to label with the straightforward obviousness. To understand and unriddle thoroughly the contradictions included in every fact and even more in every human being, character, you need to finger over the subject of research, in other words, to try to look at it from different points of view, from different positions, with different eyes. To estimate facts is to find keys to solving the mystery of a character's private psychic life that is hidden beneath the play's facts. It would be a mistake to establish the play's facts and events estimation once and for all. On further work, it is necessary to constantly return each time to a new fact re-estimation, to greater spiritual enrichment of facts. Indeed, what does it mean to estimate the play's facts and events? It means to find within them undermining psychic essence, their importance and influence degree. It means to excavate under external facts and events to find there, underneath, more important deeply concealed psychic event that may have given birth to the external fact itself. P.S. If you want to know how much event line analysis universal is, realize that even this episode has been made according to it without any preliminary intentions.